on a phenomenal Sunday afternoon. Greetings. Good evening. How you doing? Welcome to your home for wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk. Welcome to Beyond Ringside. Live from the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama, yours truly, Fast Study Lane, behind the control panel. Welcoming in tag team partners, Mark Mabo Bowman. And he took a poop earlier. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> like to welcome in tag team partner, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. What's the countdown, Eddie? <laughs> what countdown? <laughs> Damn countdowns. No, I, I take it you, well, you said you edited the video from a previous week, so you've seen the countdown come in. I do not watch this live. You know how hard it is <laughs> to just focus in on just us? Man, no. I do not listen to that. I sit back and I enjoy what is the Mabo-ness and the Fast Eddie Lane-ness. His, his flip, his side of the coin, Fast Eddie Lane. You know, it's funny because I never um, YouTube is actually starting to become a little bit more fun, so I'll probably be there both on the Beyond Ringside side of it and also on the uh, personal side, Fast Study Lane. So you never know what's going to happen next with me, thank God, because normally I have no damn idea what's going to happen. I'll leave it at that. Uh, first off, Mabo, have a good week. I didn't die or get my car repossessed, so yeah. So you're two for two on that one. Wicked, how'd your week go, man? Well, you know when you sit back and are planning how to take over the world it usually takes a little bit of time so I actually took this week off I had a chance to go to two uh, events actually they're shows until I show up but then they become events right but I decided to take this week off for what's coming next week for August 18th in Pell City, Alabama at the Pell City Civic Center for Global Championship Wrestling. So I decided to sit back and Lord have mercy on my soul. You know, it's always it's always bad when I have a week off because that gives me a week to just think about a thousand things and to come up with a thousand and four ways to overthrow everybody in existence. I have a way right now to bring the NWA back to the top and actually start the Monday Night Wars again. Not with TNA, but with the NWA against WWE. But the T but TNA, I'm just gonna say TNA needs to get back with the NWA. I kinda it's like, gotta happen. I kinda like that idea personally because there's a lot of things that can be done right now and that national platform would be a beautiful place for it. Mabel, your thoughts. I just I just wash my butt and it still smells. All right then. Um, um, no, I don't know. I mean, I, I think not right now. Five years. If TNA hasn't gone out of business in five years, they need to reapproach the NWA. I, I think the NWA can actually cultivate and personally grow their own main. I guess you might say their own, the own face of the uh, have their own face of the NWA, kind of like how TNA was years ago. Right. Um, I, I think they're actually. They could. They would do better trying to cultivate their own personal uh, media style show. You know that they could. They, their their main draw show, and you know, and then have talent feed in from the uh, other NWA affiliates. I think that they, they, they'd do better than that. You know, maybe for five years, if it doesn't work or if they can't bring it to fruition, then go back to TNA and say, "Hey, look, we're." We're better than you. We're bigger than you. We're the wicked nemesis to your J.J. Tanner. So <laughs> how about you just uh, just come on back in, just come on back in under the wing, and we'll teach you. We'll teach you all the things you know, but none of the stuff we know. I think that'd be kind of difficult on that particular side because you've got so many different um, familiar minds as far as the pro wrestling business go. And what's really funny is you can have a good head for the business and you can have a good mind for the business. But by the same token, at the same time, those variants can actually um, not coexist. Because, well, well go ahead. Can I say something really quick? Yeah. I was told one time, I was told by somebody when I was fired from a certain uh, company that I will not mention uh, from their from booking that you know what you're you were booking wrestling these people don't want to see wrestling they want to see wrestling i knew then it was great to be fired because <laughs> <laughs> i don't know anything about wrestling okay i don't i don't do the wrestling style of johnny slaughter damon taz ryan alexander and even a ryan bishop and Kamlaka like a bomb pandora the things i've learned from them 
uh, of course, Jeff G. Bailey was the one that was like, anytime you got anything good to say, you better speak up because somebody's going to do it for you. And I thought that was great advice. So Jeff G. Bailey is, is fantastic in that regard. And the thing is, is that you have to, like with the NWA, the NWA right now has a lot more talent than 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 TNA, obviously. But you have NWA Hollywood, you know, pretty decent promotion. They they use some NWA talent. Some of those guys have come and actually went on to TNA, but they will not use women's wrestlers for whatever reason. And if they don't want to use women's wrestlers, you're cutting out a big part of the NWA because the women's division is about to have the tag team division come back through that the women's division of course having the nwa women's world champion tasha simone uh doing more bookings and getting out on the road i mean that's great but these nwa promotions are hesitant like they'll throw a thousand dollars down for adam pierce but they won't you know spend 300 400 dollars for the nwa women's world champion oh well she won't draw because you don't promote her anybody that ever does a women's match and does not have a picture of them somewhere on the poster you're retarded i'm not saying you're mentally disabled i'm saying you're retarded because that is the stupidest thing in the world to have a women's match and not have the participants on the card how could you do that i don't understand because instantly even if they don't know anything about the women you can look on there and they won't see ladies women's match uh, divas knockouts whatever you want to call them even though they should just be wrestlers uh if, if you have that they're not going to see that, but if you see a woman up there, even if she doesn't have big breasts, whether she, you know, looks, they're going to be like, well, hello there. Mabo, <laughs> how many times have you walked by a poster and, and seen a woman, not even read the name, just saw a woman's image and, and stopped? Uh, well, pretty much, I mean, if there's ever a woman on the poster, I'll stop and, and look and determine, you know, if she's attractive enough for me to actually go to the show, but... Um, I mean, yeah, there's, you know, I, I agree. If you're going to advertise a woman's match, then you should have at least one of the two participants, uh, you know, on the poster. Um, and Eddie will, know what I, Eddie, Eddie will know what I'm talking about, and Wicked, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the fat man that runs here locally, and you know who I'm talking about, I'll, I'll, he's always been pretty decent about that. If he has a woman's match, he'll put their picture up on the poster, and... You know, whether it's the same woman that they used for two, three years and never really went anywhere, <clears throat> we know who I'm talking about, but he, he's always been good about that. Yep. He'll, and he's one of the only ones. He, Mad Dog is one of the only ones that does that. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, oh, I mean, I'll say his name. But yeah, yeah, you're exactly right, Mabo. But and I'm not, and I'm even not, if it is just Tracy. Yeah. Well, no, I was actually talking about somebody else. But uh, oh, V or G? V. Okay. Oh, God. So, yeah, so but I mean, um, but it's like I was saying, you know, I, 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 I didn't say his name because I was trying to be, you know, coy about it or oh. anything. I just didn't oh, want to say his name. Oh yeah, I, just I know. didn't want to say his name. That's how but, you can't uh, baby somebody, baby. Tell him, baby. Sorry, but uh, you know, I will give him that much credit. Is if if he's gonna if he books a woman's match and he needs to call it. A woman's match. Don't sit there and go. Oh wait, no, they're not No, they're calling Davis. Not calling Davis. None of them will call me in high school. But it, 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 uh, you know, at least he had the decency to put. He, he gave the, he showed them enough respect to put them on the poster, and I tip my hat if I was wearing one to him on and, that aspect. And I've got to jump in for a second because a lot of longtime listeners know that I work directly with Global and have for, have for a while. And I'm actually one of the main people who has gotten him to back away from using the word divas because the simple fact that when you're okay, divas is a branding. The word diva, as it is used, as it pertains to sports entertainment, is a brand style name. You have superstars, you have divas. By the same token, if you go to a real wrestling show, no matter where it is, it can be. NWA Top Rope in Lebanon, Tennessee. It can be NWA Anarchy over in Cornelia, Georgia. It can be um, Ring Warriors That's down it. in Florida. And it can be GCW in Alabama. The fact of the matter stands. They have a, they, a certain look and style that they want to go for in WWE. TNA 
is unsuccessfully trying to copycat that formula. And I'm going to give proper credit where credit is due. And they even exemplified that one step further by bringing in Brock Hogan. Thank you, Mabo. <laughs> I mean, Brooke. And no, like I said, Mabo's the one who started using that. And oh, I, no. I definitely give credit where credit is due. That was a great, I loved it, dude. And so does everybody I've used it. And I give your name, I give you proper credit when I used it last night in the locker room. And, and for anybody that wants to hear him actually say that live and for Eddie to laugh and actually start using it was on my YouTube page because that episode is actually up where he uses it and we lose it because it is true. I mean, she is. But I want to say something really quick. Listen, listen, you hear that? There's a monster Kona blend being open just for this rant really quick. Not really rant. <laughs> Look, if you, they shouldn't be labeled as ladies, divas, knockouts, anything. They're, they should just be wrestlers. There is nothing lady about Tasha or Kyle Michael Pandora. I'll argue that. And I'm more of a diva than anybody in the locker room. I, when I walk in, I'm the biggest diva in the locker room. I come in, and I don't give a poo-poo where I am. I will go and change the thermostat just because I can. I'm and that guy. I will agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but see, let me jump in on that one for a second because... Having worked directly with Tasha Simone, I will use the word lady at the drop of a hat due to the fact that when I worked on, on that particular show, and every time she's been on BR, whether she's been straight cut to the chase blunt or whether she has been the true ambassador that we know she is, which is huh. genuinely both rolled into one, she has been a lady and she has been the consummate professional. She has been a pure spoke, a pure ambassador and spokesperson for the women's wrestling area all the way across <laughs> the board. And so, but I would never, Eddie, I dare, I dare you to ask, I dare you to say that to her. Call her a lady. Say, oh, well, Tasha, would you rather be called a ladies wrestler? She'd be like, I ain't a lady or a female. I'm a wrestler, period. I guarantee it, she'll bite your head off. No, I you said. You tell that. exactly what you just told. You say, oh, well, we'd like to call you a lady. She is not a lady. We had this exact conversation Wednesday night. And well, she on, even wait. said it, that she hates call, being called a lady. Wait, uh, Wicked, I don't think he so much means a lady oh, yeah. and wrestler. He, I think he maybe means just like. She portrays herself as an actual, like a, a lady. Yes. Oh God. Oh yeah. Respectful. Oh yeah. 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 I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I thought we were yeah, talking about like... someone in the ring, not backstage. Oh, of course. Oh no. Inside the, the ring, she's door. no. Inside the ring, she's as cutthroat as she come as they come. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, oh, I didn't know we were breaking kayfabe. Oh, I apologize. The Tasha Simone I know backstage bites heads off chickens and poops in monkeys' mouths. <laughs> I saw her one time take take okay. a baboon and run it around and bite its butt. Okay, Wicked, there's a difference because you were managing the person with whom Tasha was in the middle of a fight. I was the ring announcer. There is a difference there. You were actually working against Tasha. Of course she's going to be mean to you, you dillweed. Oh, oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and use Tasha's real name, too, while we're at it. Let's use Tasha Simone. There you go. Okay. Can no, I no, like no. The, the Tasha Simone. The Tasha, the Tasha Simone. Simone. <laughs> or we just use the shoot Twitter name, Tasha Simone NWA. And at Tasha's Moan NWA. By the way, JL, glad to see you in the chat room this afternoon. Um, also catching you over on the Twitter feed as well. By the way, um, if you're having trouble with the... Uh, let me go ahead and say this. For everybody listening through Ustream, you can catch the live feed of Beyond Ringside directly through <laughs> beyondringside.com. So, and you can get rid of the, the annoying Ustream ads, but we are monitoring the Ustream chat room as well. So if you want to mute Ustream and open up beyond ringside.com, you'll catch it without all the annoying crap and just have to deal with our regular breaks at the top and the bottom of every hour. So that's the easy way to say it. Now, um, segueing for a hot second. TNA. Hot second. Say what? Hot second. There you go. I need that sound bite. Say that one more time. Hot second. There we go. I think I'm going to put that one in. Um, Impact Wrestling, of course, Hardcore Justice in about an hour and 12 minutes from right now. And after watching Impact this week, I genuinely think they don't have a clue about how they're really going to work uh, Aces and Eights in. Um, because I really have to sit back and say this. The show, personally, Impact this past Thursday night on Spike TV, I enjoyed it. It had a couple of holes in it here and there, but you know something? That's going to happen with any show. I don't hey, 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 hey. That's no way to talk about the knockouts. Just calling them a couple of holes. That's no way to talk about the knockouts. I've personally almost given up on the knockouts division over at Impact Wrestling due to the simple fact they let Angelina get away. They let um they they're they're hanging on by a thread. They let Velvet get away from them. Um, look, I'm still head over heels for Tara. Lisa Marie is <laughs> she's still beautiful, plain and simple. Um, oh dear God! Why are you talking about beauty? Who gives a crap about their beauty? Look, if you want to see real women's wrestling. 
August 18th, GCW, <laughs> Hell City Civic Center. We'll get that in that there, is, I swear and to I, God. And I don't give a crap. I will say it a thousand times. The To Be Determined show Wednesday night, I promise you guys this. <laughs> on TNT-radio.com. <laughs> yes, on TNT-radio.net. I just said that. Oh, I said dot I'm com. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Don't mess up. Mad Dog will have your balls. Uh, I mean, Denton. <laughs> by, by, the way, by the way, remember to have your husbands and wives spayed and neutered. Uh, or your exes. Or your exes, yes. Or they will you in court. But we Pretty had, much. you know, we had the discussion with refs, and that took up a lot of our time. And I do apologize. This week's going to be sicking. It's going to be sickingly about August 18th. And I'm sorry to say, because that is the preamble. The preamble, sorry, the pre- preamble, that sounded retarded. The preamble to what happens September 8th. The what? knockouts division is not dead yet. But all of these people that are leaving the knockouts division in TNA, you know where they're going, guys? To the NWA. They're all going and joining the NWA and going and doing shows like Crossfire, doing shows like Anarchy. Uh, they won't do top rope because they're scared to death of Tasha. But you know, everywhere around there, and there's also a new company on the horizon called Shine as well. Because remember, uh, Shimmer unfortunately only does t- uh, live events and DVD tapings like once every three months. With the talent pool that they have to draw off of, I really feel that sh- uh, that Shimmer could do something a little bit more often. And honestly, I wouldn't mind see him doing an eye pay per view. Now, let me come back over and say hold on, this. Hold on, you talking about Shine? I'm now, talking Shine. About- now, here's the problem with Shine. And a lot, of, a lot of shine, and a lot of these places, they don't use real women's wrestlers. They use girlfriends, wives, ring rats, uh, mm-hmm. babies, mamas, and things like that to put on matches. They have a few good wrestlers, but in, if you're not using Kyle like a Bomb Pandora, or if you're not using Tasha Simone, then you really are losing out. It's like running in Tennessee. How can you run a women's show in Tennessee and not have the NWA Women's World Champion on it? Besides the fact that you're a cheapskate and don't want to pay it. That's pretty much the only reason is the fact there that, you go. the fact that you're afraid to pay for real talent. Now, uh-huh. once again, let me go ahead and add in the fact that you have, you have to add Tracy Taylor to that mix, the Island Girl, yep, because she well, is. Tra- but tra- I think Tracy, but Tracy was on Shine. Tracy did the first Shine Eye pay per view. Now, okay, so I mean, uh, you have her on, but <laughs> I don't. Uh, she's not my big sister like Tasha is, and right. I don't manage her. And she's not Nina Mo- Monet, who I love. So, you know, if if you're not the queen of the MOD, you're not my big sister. You're not Nina Monet. Then I'm sorry to say you're you're probably riding that Jessica Havoc type uh, level of <clears throat> ambiguity. <laughs> now let me get back to something real quick, and I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna I'm gonna let y'all have open run on this as soon as I'm done. I made the reference to Lisa Marie in the same reference that I make to Beth Phoenix. The fact that, damn, and the fact of the matter is. A, they can work. B, they are attractive. So, And I put it in that order. By the same token, if you go to a nightclub, you're not always going to look at the girl's dancing ability before you look at their looks. There is a difference between the two. Now, in a wrestling show, yeah, I'm watching the way they work. Yes, I'm paying attention to in-ring talent and ability. The ability to either follow their program or call a match in the ring. Aw, damn, did I break that one? Yes, I did. But by the same token, I'm getting... I'm pretty much over... If I'll put it this way, if the knockouts title changes hands tonight with the storyline going on between Madison Rain and her boy crush um, Hebner, I'm sorry, I'm pretty much done with the Impact Division. I will change over to the Food Network whenever the Impact the knockouts come on, at least for two weeks, because that's pretty much my period of anger toward a company like that. Um, do I think that they should bring in bring back? Full scale girls like Jackie Moore. Yes, talented workers who know their way around the ring, who can properly work a match. Hell yes. Do I think they're crazy for letting ODB get out from under the radar? Yes, I do. Um, you know, ODB is very, very charismatic and even more so talented. And I enjoy watching ODB in the ring, I enjoy watching Jackie Moore in the ring. Mickey James is starting to get stale. I'm sorry. I like Mickey. Don't get me wrong. This is not a personal affront to her. This is not a personal shot. As far as on camera, she's a one-trick pony. In my humble opinion, she is a one-trick pony. The same thing can be said for Gail Kim. She's good in the ring. But she is a one... I mean, I'm sorry. There is no depth there. And I said the same thing the first time she was in Impact. and the Both times that she was in WWE. I've never been that impressed with Gail. She's she's a good worker, 
She's a good wrestler. But as far as the overall scheme of things goes, she comes off completely and totally flat. That's just my opinion. I'll toss to Mabo. Come on in. Well, first of all, Eddie, I, I do look at the women's dance moves uh, before I look at them because I want to make sure that their legs function properly so they can get the hell out of my bed come the following morning. Know what I'm saying? Okay. Giggity. Uh, what are you talking about? I was too busy thinking about that whole joke the whole time. I wasn't even listening. <laughs> Keep going. No, seriously. What are we talking about? Women? <laughs> Impact knockouts division. Oh, God. That that abortion's still around? Afraid so. Oh, my God. I mean, you got the... Uh, uh, and then the... Uh, and the uh, uh. And I'm uh. just going to go... While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add one more name to the mix. I'm sorry. Tess Mocker does not impress me. There well, are, other than her, uh, other than her manly jawline, I think she's attractive. That's what you said about Brock Hogan too. That jawline came uh, out first, dude. But well, that and the bulge in the front of her pants kind of scares me. And on but, top of everything else, I'm sorry, Tess Mocker, just no moving parts, including personality, and there's just nothing there that impresses me. Well, it seems like they're kind of going with the the the, the diva, uh, which is thing stupid. Well, I know, I know, I know. But they're trying to go with the formula that works, and unfortunately, that's like, you know, trying to make a, you know, to show your support of Chick Fil A, trying to make a homemade Chick Fil A sandwich at the house. Guess what? It looks like it, smells like it, don't necessarily taste like it. If you know what I'm saying. There's only so, one Chick Fil A. I know, and I don't, you know, agree with what their COO or whatever he says. That's your prerogative. Whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just like he had, he said what he said. We're not going to be on that anyway. Um, they're trying. They're trying to do. A, they're trying to. They're trying a formula that WWE has. They have women who can wrestle, mm. and and who are you know kind of attractive. And then you've got you know the ones who really can't. Who they you know just roll around and you know flop like a fish, like a SpongeBob you know square pants, and they you know they're just there to look, stand there and look pretty. And they try to put them over as their wrestlers, but they're not. Same thing, except for this time, TNA's failing. They have, I can't even, they don't even have a handful. I mean, uh, what have they got? They got Mickey, Tara, Tess. Madison Rain, Gail Kim. That's four. Tess Mocker. Uh, Tess Mocker, that's five. And then ODB, that's six. Yep. That's six. Well, apparently they're also still hemorrhaging money right now, but unfortunately there's nothing they can do about that. Well, I mean, what are you going to, you can't have a tag team, a, a knockouts tag team division and a knockouts singles title with six people. That's like when I was a kid and I got like, you know, four wrestlers to start off with. You can't start a, a fake wrestling toy company like I used to do, <laughs> and still do with four wrestlers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and put so, the world in proper perspective. They let Hamada get away. They let Rosita... Oh God. No, let's run down the list. They let Hamada get away. They let Kong get away. They let, uh, even to an extent, you know, I mean, not the best in the world, but still pretty good. They let Velvet Sky, they let Angelina Love, they let them get away. Taylor Wilde? Taylor Wilde, even though she looked like a little weird Cupid doll porn star. They let um, Daphne. Sarah. Sarita? Yeah, oh, no. Sarita, oh, that was it. Sarita and Rosita are still with them. But what? Sarita's, yes. No, listen. Listen. Sarita is still with them but she's like you know what you guys are going to use me screw you I'm going back to Mexico making money which she has been I'm going to freaking Japan which I believe she's on her way now or going to be soon so she's like biggity bam now whatever Rosita's I don't know what Rosita's doing but they're still with the company and we but left not being used remember we also left off Alyssa Flash oh god that's definitely one that they should have never you know Raisha Saeed with her I declare a fuck plot on you when she was managing Kong, and then when they brought her in as Alyssa Flash. When they brought her in as Alyssa Flash, holy crap. First of all, them abs, I want to lick them. Second of all, freaking, they don't call her the future for no reason, all right? Now, that's what I'm saying. We've listed a handful, right? You know, you know just not even a handful, but two handfuls. <laughs> Knockouts, two handfuls. Of women's wrestlers who are far better and could have helped, you know, the, the division... But no, they want to concentrate on other stuff, and it's it's ridiculous. They want to concentrate on stupid baby mama, dis your daddy, AJ Daniels, Kaz. Probably had a three way with her. She looks that trashy. So no, let's concentrate on that. Let's let's concentrate. Let's concentrate on Madison Rain making out and probably going to suck the dentures out of Earl Hebner's mouth, the lucky <laughs> bastard. But 
it just doesn't make any sense. And you know what? They can eat poop. Wicked Nemesis, we've got about a minute left. Do you want to take it or do you want to wait till the top of the hour? There's really nothing to say. Uh, they let so, so much talent get away. Uh, you cannot take them serious anymore. I'm sorry to say, uh, and it's their own fault. <clears throat> At one time, they were, they were the preeminent place uh, for women's division. They were using women better than uh, the NWA was. Not anymore. Do you think that they're spending probably close to 30% of their budget on Bischoff Hogan, uh, Jason Hervey, uh, Kurt Angle, and Jeff Hardy? More. Well, no, no. Kurt, Ang- Kurt Angle's not through TNA. Kurt Angle has a contract with Spike. So Kurt Angle has nothing to do with their budget. The problem is, is that they bring these guys in. Let's reach you. We got really quick. These guys are making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars at WWE shoot. They go and they make three thousand dollars in appearance or more, and they have little things taken care of. That's not everybody. That's just a few guys like Anderson and um, and Sting, of course. All those guys. Sting uh, should have a contract through Spike because Spike TV actually wants Sting on there. Right. They do not want him at TNA as much as Spike wants him on there to have a recognizable face. They're, the biggest majority of their contracts are all through ex-WWE guys. Uh, the guys that they've brought up through their farm system, so to speak, or through Ring of Honor, whatever, you know how much these guys get? Less. Less than what a lot of the guys make on the independent scenes. I believe it. Well, Just for the quote-unquote TV exposure. Tell you what, do me a favor. Hold that thought. We'll pick that one up after the break. Folks, we're going to the top of the hour break. We'll be back in five right here on Beyond Ringside. Welcome to the original rock and wrestling radio show. Welcome to Beyond Ringside, your source for wrestling, MMA, and boxing in the Southeast. To contact the Ringside Roundtable of Beyond Ringside, email them at beyondringside at gmail.com. And now, your host for Beyond Ringside, the man, no myth, all legend, Fast Eddie Lay. Anything can happen. We prove that each and every time. Just after the top of the hour, welcome in. Beyond Ringside, live from the Full Range Entertainment Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Past Eddie Lane behind the control panel. Thank you, Mike Macaroni, for the intro. Always a pleasure. I'd like to welcome in tag team partner Mark Mabo Bowman. Hot pocket. Hello. Least Y'all you missed me, didn't you? <laughs> I was getting there. Give me a second. <laughs> I'd like to welcome in tag team partner the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. August 18th. And then some. And ladies and gentlemen, very special guest at this time. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop the special guest part and say now a member of the family. <laughs> I love my Bama crew. Say what? Uh, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Wrestling Alliance Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone on with us. Tasha, glad to have you on board. Thank you. If I'm neutral, it's because I'm still munching on my fried chicken. Maybe I have a bite for you, too. Yay! I had my cheat day today also. Um, the roommates decided that they were going to grill out, so we had uh, steak, baked potatoes, salad, and green beans. I have, my, I have my cheat day every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, hey, what's your cheat day? Uh, Ying Ling? Is that what it is? Who? You. Uh, no, my cheat day would actually be Bacardi and Coke. Oh, I thought it would be a Ying Ling. No, my regular diet consists of uh, Crown, Long Island Iced Tea, Jaeger, and Cuervo Gold. And about six bear aspirin. But other than that, a lot of great things going on. First off, we're going to, um, Tasha, do me a favor. We were, um, on the backside of one quick discussion point, and I don't know if you were listening into the show, um, before you called, but I want to go ahead and pick this one up. Wicked, what was the last point that you laid out there? So we're going to run this seamlessly. I have no idea. Oh, great. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a stoner. Me up really quick, guys. Yes. I called literally at six o'clock. I had just walked in the door from taking my kids shopping at the mall, so if I sound a little testy, it's because I was at the mall with teenagers and a lot of fat people <laughs> surrounding me. Well, we were just talking about the women's division at TNA and how it's kind of fallen off, and I was saying that, you know, they, have one? they can't they can't be taken seriously because of, you know, at one time their women's division, you know, was over more than the NWA women's division because people knew about it. Nobody knew. But now that's not the case. And now all these people that are, all these women that are leaving 
uh, the NWA or sorry that are leaving TNA's uh, knockout division are actually coming and trying to get bookings in the NWA now. That now they're like, hey, you know, we weren't being used here and there, and we uh, actually ran down a list, or Fast Eddie Lane and Mabo did because I couldn't remember everybody that they've let go of great, great women's talent that they've let go through their hands now to just where they literally have like six or seven uh, women. And I think Night Air on Twitter has pointed out before that, you know, he watches, I can't watch TNA, but Night Air and Chill Mascaris and a few of these guys who do watch Impact point out that you can see better women's wrestling on the independent uh, scene. You've always we also been talked about the NWA. We also talked about NWA Hollywood. And, you know, it, it's the preeminent uh, TV show for NWA, but yet they don't even use women at all on their show. And that's what we were discussing right Very before. Very rarely. We they... Well, Go ahead, here's Tasha. what I'm going to say about this. Before I stopped watching TNA, notice I said before, because I did used to watch it. The reason I used to watch it is because they had a strong women's division with some women who are very good friends of mine who I actually respect, which is a very short list because I really don't care for women's wrestling. I've said that repeatedly. I respect good wrestling. Period. You're either a wrestler or you're not. I think one of the most detrimental things they have done with their women's division was get rid of Jacqueline. I don't care who likes me saying it. I don't care who doesn't like I mean, I don't care. Jacqueline is an outstanding professional wrestler. She doesn't go in and baby anybody. She's a wrestler. Um, they don't let ODB do her job when she is there. They have Gail Kim, who they think is the greatest thing since Bricks, and I'm still trying to figure out where the hell anybody calls her the female version of Rey Mysterio. Well, he doesn't get hurt every time he does a high spot. But I, I, I'm getting away from my subject. <clears throat> they also have right now Sarah Stock, who in my opinion is one of the top female wrestlers bar none worldwide. They do not allow her to do her job. They do not allow her to get in the ring and wrestle. They had Awesome Kong there who is, uh, or excuse me, Amazing Kong, whatever the crap they called her because her name changed so much. Karma to all the people that watch the soap opera now. An amazing talent. This woman is so talented. She works like a 120-pound woman that still has the power of a 250-pound man. Completely impressive. But if you will notice what they've done with the women's division, the minute that they brought Terry Bollet, I mean, Hulk Hogan, I Rock mean, Hogan. Mr. Take Your Vitamins and Make a Porno Movie, um, into the picture. It's done porn? They could no longer have women overshadowing the men's division because he is certainly not going to be a part of anything where women, much less men, but definitely not women, make it obvious that he's a crappy wrestler. And then to further insult and slap the women in the face, they have hired his daughter, Brooke, I don't even know if she's still there, and put her in control of the women's division. And this is a person who has publicly spoken and said, I hate professional wrestling. Well, if you hate professional wrestling, what the hell are you going to do to benefit the women's division to make it better? Because right now, there's not much they can do to put it any lower. And that's a shame. Let me segue for a second because I remembered part of what I was originally saying but uh, back before the top of the hour break. Bear with me for just one second. We're making a reference to people who the budget lines and where money is being spent in Impact Wrestling. Note that they are supposedly bringing on brand new faces in the form of the gut check winners. And once again, case point scenario. Which is a work. Huh? Which is a work and they're bringing in crappy workers from where? Hey Tasha, how do you feel about the uh, about the woman that won the gut check? Oh, Ginger. Oh, uh, you mean the one that says I'm a cancer survivor? So give me a job. Uh, I think that's her. Taylor I'm not Hendricks. Real sure. The one, Taylor Hendricks. The one that likes you. Hey, don't don't say that out loud. And here it is. The I think match. that if you're going to be a professional wrestler and you can't get more, somebody more than two inches off the mat for a go behind takedown, you need to pack your bags. Blow it in the dumpster and jump in behind it. 
Now, see, we make the reference to Impact, and we all agree that the Knockouts division was much better when it was being headed up and managed by the Netherlands. Um, nice translation, huh? And ever since the Netherlands was replaced in the United Nations by God only knows what, it's it's never been the same. But by the same time, I'm going to ask a question. And I want all of us to weigh in on it. When we hear, and this is where I hate the internet. This is one of the reasons why I do. Because that wall is so fragile. And I would like to see that wall rebuilt. But when we hear that a certain executive has been replaced in a particular role, and we like the job that is that that person has been doing, such as when the Netherlands was replaced as the person in charge of the knockouts, do we not automatically, to a degree, have a negative connotation that we will apply to that? Or do we actually do do any of us actually give the person who is moving into the position a fair chance? Do we say, okay, we'll give that person a shot, or no, they're going to suck because the person who was before there was doing a great job, and all they're going to do is botch it up? Maybo, you first. Well, it all depends on who's who's replacing uh, whom. If if the person who if the replacer is you know has a, has not doesn't have the best track record. You don't, you know, you, you've seen from their past experience what they've done. Then of course you're automatically going to you're going to be less to give them a chance. Now, if it's someone you don't know their track record or might, you know, even be better, then you know you're you're more inclined to give them a chance, even though you have liked what you know what the previous person has done. You know, if it's somebody who you know, it's like going to you know if you're a regular at a restaurant, you always have this chef. Well, they let this chef go. If they bring in a, a chef you know is crap, then you're not going to be inclined to eat the food. But if you know that if you've never tested the chef before, or if you know that this is a better chef, then you're going to be more inclined to say, okay, well, you know what, I'll, I will give it a chance, and you know, not try. You know, I like the past, but let's try what you know what's the here and now. I mean, that's how I look at it. If you know when they when the people who do what they do are replaced, I, I, as long as the person doesn't have a negative stig, you know stigmata on them then I will sit there and give them the benefit of the doubt. Wicked. Okay. Uh, first of all, it, should, it shouldn't be made known when there's a transition like that. The only time there should be known of a transition if it's in the work. If, there, if the knockouts division goes from being wrestling, 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 we're bringing around women from around the world, uh, some women that you know the WWE would never put on because you know, like ODB, you know, they're Stone Cold type or Calmer, the large black woman, or Sarah Del Rey, they're an actual wrestler, you know, uh, or Daphne, somebody that you know that that could wrestle that was a manager. You know, when you bring in these type of people, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, we're gonna stop completely, stop everything you're doing. It's like okay, build the wall, build the wall out of cement. Stop everything you're doing. Stop everything you're doing, guys. Now we're going to start building boats. <laughs> and that's what they did with the knockouts division. They went from building walls, from being masons, to all of a sudden doing carpentry and crucifying Jesus. I don't know, somewhere around there. Tasha, your input. Well, I'm going to take a little bit different approach to this than everybody else has. First of all, it's nobody's damn business who the booker is other than the workers. And when you put somebody over a division, quote-unquote, that means they're the booker. The talent relations for the smart marks that are listening, they're the booker. They're the ones putting things together and bringing talent in. That's nobody's business but the workers. That's nobody's business. That's not something that should be put on television. That's not something that should be made public at house shows. It's simply nobody's business but whoever is the company running the back. Period. Blank. It doesn't matter. This goes back to the whole soap opera aspect of professional wrestling now. Um, second of all, the women being put to the side and say, well, we're going to put somebody else over you because apparently you're not important enough for us to lump you in 
with the people that we consider wrestlers is another slap to the face. The same person who books for the men should also book for the women. They should be treated as wrestlers, period, blank. And when you see this big, huge change and they put somebody in there, as I've said and Mabel was talking about it, hiring a crappy chef when a good one has just left. Why in the world would you respect a division that is being headed up by somebody who's never even climbed in the lane before? And to make that public is only giving the public a reason to disrespect it anymore. And it truly shows the fans who watch the product that the company doesn't respect their wrestlers. You, you no, I... Wait, wait. Uh, let me ask something really quick. Let me ask something now. Is the stuff with Brooke? Is this all like a figurehead? Is this like, hey, she's out there, or is she really over the women's division? That's what I want to know. I pray to God she's not even really doing anything. I hope not. I, hope I it's think just... she's just drawing a paycheck. But regardless, the impression that they give—that's what I'm saying. The public impression. Who cares? It's still a slap in the face to the women who do actually get in the ring, and even if they're crappy, ugly bumps, they're the ones that are busting their backs. They're the ones who have to go to the chiropractor the next day. Right. This woman, if your head or not, has publicly, multiple times, said, I hate professional wrestling. So, now you're going to bring this person who hates professional wrestling in and give them a paycheck because daddy's sorry or is tired of supporting her untalented behind. You can say ass. No, I'm trying to be nice. Okay. It's difficult. That may be my only nice moment of the night. (laughs) I'm actually going to go ahead and say it probably will, especially when I ask you this next question because I'm going to ask you point blank. We love this little thing called the World Wide Web, the Internet. Do you think that wrestlers, workers, staff have managed to do more? Okay, I won't lump in and say all. I will say some or certain without mentioning names have done more to destroy our little sister Kay than the rest of the internet, whether it be new fans, educated fans, fans who think they're more educated than they really freaking are, and those who have been genuinely smartened up by people in the business. Or do you think it's a toss-up between the two? Well, you're probably going to be surprised at my answer. (sighs) Let me take a breath here. This might be a little long-winded. Let it rip. I'm going to start out by saying, Hey, babe, and all of it, and I'm saying it, Hey, babe, ain't dead. She's not even sleeping at this point. She's awake. So all of you people who think you know exactly what we do and how it gets done and who calls the shot, guess what? There's a reason you're not getting paid to think. The Internet has done serious, serious damage to professional wrestlers. Wrestlers, and I'm going to call a name out, and I don't care who gets mad at me about it. There is a former world champion who will go down in history and should as one of the most highly respected professional wrestlers that has ever set foot in the ring. His name is Harley Race, and he was on Secret for Professional Wrestling Exposed when it was on ABC, NBC, or wherever it is. He sold out for a paycheck. But guess what? Even when he told that, he didn't tell everybody about all of the orthopedic surgeons that we have to pay. He didn't tell everybody about the chiropractors that we have to pay. 
He didn't tell everybody about all of the guys who have to live on 25 or 30 more pounds or some of the day because their bodies hurt so bad. Because no matter how many secrets he exposed, he didn't expose the ones that would keep these smart idiots from climbing in the ring and trying what we do. And if you think for one minute that everything that we do, and I hate this word, is fake. Fake means not real. I defy anybody to come to any venue that I am at wrestling. I defy anybody who come to, to come to any venue that simply perfection is looked at. I'll get in the ring and work out with you. And then if you are a big enough man, woman, or child to tell me that what I do is fake, I haven't done my job. But I promise you what's going to happen is you're going to get in the ring with me. I'm going to make you kiss your own ass. I'm going to make you like it. And you're going to forget you ever knew how to spell the word fake, much less say it. The Internet has killed this business. It's time for us to put professional wrestling back in the ring and back on the marquee. And that is exactly what I guarantee is fixing to happen in the NWA. So all you little people keep typing on the Internet, talking about all you know and who's doing who to get their job and who's blowing who to get their job and how much a pile driver doesn't hurt and how much an arm bar doesn't hurt or a headlock. You get in the ring with me, I'll show you a headlock can knock you out. Yep. And now That's my rant. This is one that I'm going to open up, and I know we've only got four minutes till the bottom of the hour break. But I want to ask this one, and I'm going to go in this order, so Tosh, I'm going to give you time to think. I'll pick you up after the top, uh, bottom of the hour break. For as much as we love Facebook, MySpace, Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter... <coughs> I have three accounts. I can't say that much crap, but I can say this. People in this industry, people in this business, or any business, sport, all of the above, should promoters, bookers, trainers, CEOs, presidents, HR people need, now I'm using that word strictly by definition not by creative interpretation should they need to have to tell their workers, their staff, their people their employees that if they are working off of a company based account or one that is being used to represent them being a part of a company that they need to remember the fact that they are ambassadors of that company not to mention their own selves Mabo, did you catch the drift of that? Not really. Okay, case point scenario. If I have beyond ringside Eddie, and I go on there and I just start ranting up one side and down the other about stuff that's not really pertinent to that, and I start airing out personal crap on the company account, if you were in charge, would you come to me and say something beforehand? Or would, um, when I first come on with the company, it's like, look, we're giving you this Twitter account. Remember that under that name, you're a representative of this company use it wisely should we have to be able should we have to tell people something like that um well no because it should be implied i mean you know as you guys know and as listeners know i work for target and it, it, it is an unwritten rule that even if i'm off the clock um if i'm out in red and believe it or not even if i'm out in in what's considered the target uniform i have to be a representative for target i have to be on my best behavior you know, if I'm even on my off days, if I show up on my off days, I can't go in there effing and jeffing like you know normal other people would, because I'm a representative, and they don't they they don't tell us that. We just know that. You know, it's the same thing. You you if you're under the guise now, if this was a regular Fast Eddie Lane account, not affiliated with Beyond Ringside or whatever, say what you want to say. You know, do do what you want to do. Dance how you want to dance. Kick and they slap a friend. Adam's family. Adam's family. <laughs> You um, you know, you do that. That's your personal thing. But if it's got, you know, the Beyond Ringside banner, then there's a, a bit of decorum that has to be held. The same thing. You know, you shouldn't have to tell people that because you're a representative. You're representing your brand, your company, name, whatever. So, no, you shouldn't have to say it. 
that's what adults would figure that out. Grown ups would figure that out. People with common sense would figure that out. But then they go. Then again, you've got the people who lack all of that. They lack the maturity to understand what business is. So it has to be. It has to be said for those, you know, for the nose pickers, uh, you know, and the static, the people who watch static TV in the middle of the night because they're special. Tell you what, Wicked, I will come to you straight out of the break. We're going to the bottom of the hour break. We'll be back in five right here on Beyond Ringside. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget for more information on the full range of services we offer call 533 hits that's 533 h-i-t-s or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com Music plays, the microphones go hot, and we are back live on a Sunday night. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Live. That's Debbie Lane on this side of the control panel. Maybo, come on back. Go down, me Wonder Wheel. Go down, me. You have so much to live for. <laughs> Wicked Nemesis, come on back. Although I do like tan lines, I find them very attractive. Mocha tan lines, just something about mocha tan lines. But Wonder Wheel! <laughs> Wonder Wheel! <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest during this hour, the multi-time National Wrestling Alliance Women's World Champion, Tasha Zimone. Welcome back in. Why, thank you, thank you, thank you. We remember the question from before the break. Wicked, come on in. Yes, I always wanted a wonder wheel. I always had a wonder wheel when I was a kid. Wait, what? (laughs) No. Is this prediction time? (laughs) No, that's later. (laughs) Okay. Social networking, nope. decorum. I know. Look, okay. If if you have WWE or NWA or something like that added onto it, of course you're going to have to have decorum. But if you have a uh, a social media out beforehand, I, I hate the fact that for a while, like the first year and a half, as you all know, my shoot name was on my Facebook page, and I hated that because people that never knew that that I mean there were people that actually thought. My shoot name for, for years was Enoch Tessarian. I mean, they really thought that because I had always introduced myself as Wicked Nemesis because I was a douchebag. Because I've had people, when I first got into the business, call me by my shoot name. And I looked at them like they were retarded, not mainly disabled, because I'm not making fun of those people, but I'm talking about, like, retards. So, and that's one of the things about it is the fact that, like, Facebook... You can't put out Wicked Nemesis. If you, want to, if you were to put out Mabo, it would be like, no, oh, can't have that. Uh, doesn't recognize that name. And up until they started doing the timeline, even Enoch Tessarian uh, wouldn't work for myself. Now I'm able to, so now it's a little bit better. But uh, as everybody knows, I, I love professional wrestling. Uh, I bleed NWA. But my, my Twitter and my Facebook, you all know. I mean, my wife, and this is a total shoot, actually unfriended, or not unfriended me, but unlinked my uh, Facebook from hers because I got so much hate mail and so many death threats. She's like, they're going to start putting this stuff on my page. And so and you, that's one of the things you have to work out. But a lot of people, now let's be honest, there's not a lot of people that put controversial things. Like A.W. saying the whole Kobe Bryant in a, uh, in a Colorado hotel room being unstoppable. You know, should, should he have been fired for that? No, he should have been reprimanded. But he should have had the wherewithal not to say to begin with. Right. Now, me, now, you guys know for a long time I had a picture of myself that Mad Dog Matt Denton had made, and he had changed my yellow and black uh, Sinestro Corps mask to red and black and put a Hitler mustache on me. And I had that for my, for my page forever. Uh, it's with, my, with me, I use my social media as it should be to promote myself. To promote uh, Damon Taz, to promote uh, Chris Knox, Calm Like a Bomb Pandora, to promote myself, to promote Nina Monet, to promote Tasha Simone, to promote Fast Eddie Lane, to promote Mabo. But that's what it is for me. And if you look at some of my stuff and you believe that, that I, 
half the stuff I put up there is true, well, then I've won. Because I only, you only know what I allow you. You've seen my ezo, my exoteric uh, video I have up. I only let you know what I want you to know. But a lot of people aren't that conscious of things. A lot of people, you know, just go out there and they just point out, hey, uh, you know, oh Hitler and things like that. I can put up a, a Hitler picture, and then immediately everybody's like, oh, this, this, look at this idiot. Because it's funny because they know. That anytime somebody you know drops the f bomb, you know when they're talking about homosexuals or the n bomb or anything like that, I'm quick to just utterly destroy. You all know that. Uh, anytime that somebody outside the business thinks that they want to tell us how to do our business, because entertainment, because I mean we all are in sports. There's a lot of people that wrestlers and sports entertainment, but we do entertain, so we do have a part of entertainment. Entertainment, whether it be comedians, whether it be actors. Whether it be anything that's live, anything that's done up front, especially comedians and, and uh, rock and rollers and wrestlers, where the fans are right there, where they want to be a part of the show and they're screaming out, and then they want to get on the internet and be like, hey, Tasha Simone had a horrible butt bump. She showed that it's fake. Her pile driver's fake. Well, what they don't know is that if you go to talk to the person that she just literally pile drove, yeah, she's taking care of them, but still, you're having your entire body with somebody else slammed down. People don't realize that. But if we go out and we like, hey, you need to go talk to my chiropractor and you need to talk to the spinal cord and, and see all this stuff, then we're really exposing the business. So the best way to do it is for anybody out there, you know, it's like the guy that did Blood Rain. He invited all anybody, any critic out there that wanted to uh, criticize one of his movies, because you know he's done some and movies you know, about like, Alone in the Dark, uh, Blood Rain, and something else, uh, another one I can't forget, you know, it was kind of low budget that was from a, uh, a game. He challenged them all to a boxing match, and he beat the crap out of all of them. And that's how it should be. And I challenge anybody. I mean, I'm a manager. I challenge anybody that thinks that anything we do is fake. Then please, come find me. You know, everybody knows where I'm at, because if you follow my Facebook and Twitter, as we were talking about social media, you know exactly where I am. And I've had people jump the rail on me. As Jeff so poignantly told uh, Wednesday night on the V2B Determined Show, and you guys know, Maybo's been a, Maybo's been a fan of this business forever. Maybo has done enough in this business. You know, there's enough guys in there. They don't portray that. They are fans, and they are smartened up to the business to a certain extent because they help out. That's one thing. But these guys, we all know them. We all know them. They're those guys. They go out there and they tell every single thing. They tell you who they're fighting this week, the finish to the match, and they're like, well, I'm supposed to be winning the title in two months. That person, no matter how close of a friend you think they are, out in the fans, when you see us, if they do their job and we're treated as gods, if they see one of us in the ring, they're going to be like, that's my friend. Oh, really? <laughs> really? I, yeah, I know him. You know how I know him? And they're going to start bragging and start telling. And that person's going to tell something, and then you've ruined everything. Then no matter what you've done in the ring, they're like, hey, He's going to win this match. You know how I know? Because in two months, he's going to win the title. People don't think that way, though. And it all starts with us in the business. And then it trickles down to the fans. Yep. They're, not every fan is Mabo or Matt Ditton or uh, Pierce. You know, from Pierce Tapes, it goes around in film saying, see, he doesn't say anything. Right. And this guy knows everything. Fast Eddie, I mean, you you do stuff. You could come in and in the 18 hours worth of... Uh, worth of radio you do a week you could come in and totally expose anything but you hold back and not everybody has that decorum but the wrestlers have to it starts with them you have to watch if you're attached to them if not you need to make sure that you use your social media to promote yourself because nobody else is going to do it there don't wait go. for the promoter to do it don't wait for somebody else to do it you take the reins you know august 18th you know september 8th who's talked about september 8th more than anybody Tasha and myself, we have promoted the heck out of this. The NWA's behind it. We're the ones that have taken the reins to go this. And I've said this from day one. If they don't want me to promote the women's division, if they don't want my angle, my view, the Oracle of Amos Architect of Intellect, the Wicked Nemesis view of the women's division, well, then they need to promote it. If not, Tasha and I are going to ram this down everybody's throat. Speaking of, let's turn the reins over to Tasha. Your response? Well, again, with social media, 
and I've already made it very, very blunt. The internet has done a lot to kill professional wrestling as we used to know it. Coming back, anybody who missed me saying this the first time, I'm going to ram this down your throat just like I'm going to ram September the 8th down your throat and August 18th. You need to know, all of you people who love professional wrestling, you are about to start getting it again. For the guys who use social media, and I'm going to go a step further than you did, Eddie. It's not just about being on a promotion-endorsed site. It is about being on your social media as well. Wicked and I both, and I'm going to say this very bluntly on our Twitter and our Facebook pages, Wicked is on Twitter more so than Facebook. We are both very blunt. We say what we have to say. That is my place talk and if anybody doesn't like what I don't what I have to say, all they have to do is hit the delete button and take me out of their timeline. I don't care if they don't like what I have to say. I really don't. But at the same time, the people who are using it to air out their dirty laundry or say, I don't like this one or I don't like that one need to remember you have to promote yourself the way you want to be viewed by the fans and by other promoters and workers as well. If you are unprofessional enough that you are going to go on Facebook, Twitter, heaven forbid if anybody still gets on my face, <laughs> if they go on any of these public venues, this public media, and they say, I'll just throw it out there, I don't like Adam Pierce because he's mean to women. So I'm just going to blow him up and talk some really, really bad crap about him. That's something that should be kept in the back. That's something that should be handled as a professional. That person should go to Adam Pierce face-to-face, on the phone, text message, something. But it's not meant for public view. While we are promoting ourselves, we are promoting matches, we are promoting professional wrestling. Thank you. It is time to keep locker room business in the locker room. If it is personal business that your rat wife, baby mama drama, is sleeping with somebody else in the locker room, guess what? Keep that out completely. It would be no different than taking your personal crap to a regular ham and egg job Monday through Friday. You have to leave your personal business at home. It is no different. So any of these guys that go on social media and they are talking about who they're mad at or their baby mama sleeping with somebody else need to be taught a lesson. It needs to come back to the locker room policing the problem. Thank you. The guys that go out and tell their friends what's going to go on, <clears throat> when that happened back in the day, they got their ass in seat. <laughs> Time to start beating those asses again. See, let me pop this one in there. I blame us. Not this show. Not me directly, not Wicked directly, Tasha, not you directly. Maybe well, I can't say you because, I'm like I said, I'm t- referring to workers. And please understand when I say that. There's no disrespect intended. I just realized how that came out. What I'm talking about is people who've been in this business. Now, you mentioned the show, Wrestling Secrets Exposed. Mm-hmm. What if people who were disgruntled in this business but still had enough damn respect for this business and respect for themselves wouldn't go on it. People who want to do these shoot interviews, you Mm -hmm. shoot or whatever the hell it is, had enough respect for this business that has been good for most of us and good to them unless they absolutely suck. And there's some people who absolutely suck who have multi-million dollar or have million dollar contracts. We ha- you're right. The locker room needs to police itself. We need to police ourselves. Does that mean if does that mean if somebody with GCW decides they wants to start shooting off their mouth on a message board? Uh, yeah, let's go whip that ass, plain and simple, because we do more. 
as workers, if we're not careful to hurt our business, to destroy the business as well as the fun of our business. You know, when we go to window, we go into a locker room and one of our people come in and we know that that person just did a Twitter rant or a Facebook rant running down somebody, we give them that funny little look like, you really just did that in public. It's like, okay, let's just go ahead and fire up a chainsaw in church. It, no, that don't work either. So honestly, I really have to sit back and say, if we don't respect the business, maybe, maybe, maybe we can respect ourselves enough as individuals, as people, as professionals, and as human beings to not do this crap. But the bottom line is, if they don't respect the business, and this is something very important, and I'm so blessed and, and glad that I was taught this way. Respect was beat into not just me, but anybody that trains with me. We had that pounded into us from the very first time we stepped in the ring. That's how I train people. That's how, and, and y'all have both been in my locker room, so you know, that is how I don't exist that the locker room to be, that is how I demand a locker room be. Whether it's my locker room at Top Rope, whether it's the locker room I'm going to be in at GCW this Saturday, I demand professionalism and respect. Nothing less is acceptable. And I was taught, and I saw it happen. This isn't something that's just a hearsay story. I've seen it happen. As a matter of fact, I might have possibly tried to put somebody's head through a television set one night because his old lady found out something about a match that he was doing from his mouth, and she went out and told about 15 people in the crowd. So I might have possibly, I will not confirm or deny, might have possibly tried to put somebody's head through a television set due to that. So I've actually witnessed the locker room policing the locker room. It is time for professional wrestlers to step up and say enough. Either be professional and do your job or get the hell out. Do me a favor. Let's segue for a second because we got the pay-per-view starting in seven minutes. Let's go ahead and pop predictions real quick. Impact Wrestling, uh, Hardcore Justice. I have a prediction. <laughs> and no saying the pay-per-view I is going to... I su- have a prediction. Do you want to know what the prediction is? Saying the Let pay-per-view... Her say Let her say it. It's going to be good. Saying the pay-per-view is going to suck they're is not a prediction. They're only going to pan one side of the arena and make it look like they're doing a rotating shot for the whole night because they didn't sell enough tickets to pack out the house. This one's done at the impact zone. It's a pretty much freebie. <laughs> if, they have, if they haven't got a people in there, it's their own damn and fault. And notice I said... You're gonna pan one side of the crowd and make it look like a rotating camera shot because they couldn't pack out the house. Yeah, I know it's bad when you have a free show and the damn thing doesn't pack out. Um, I thought you were gonna give tickets away. It's bad. <laughs> Let's do this thing real quick. X division title match: Kenny King, Zima Ion, Maybo. Oh God, you know who you know who I hate, but he's gonna freaking anyway. Yeah, Zima. Wicked. Zima. Tasha, would you like to weigh in? Kid Cash. Oh, I only one other that's choice. another match. Um, I don't have a vote on this one. Okay. Uh, personal opinion, I think they're going to go ahead and put the belt on Kenny King. I think that was part of the arrangement for him to come over from ROH. It's the fact that he's going into the um, X division as opposed to the tag team division where a lot of people really know him. And I think Kenny King would be really good for the X division title right now. Uh, Kid Cash and Gunner taking on Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez. Maybo. Um... I'm going to say, in Guerrero fashion, I'm going to say Chavo and Hernandez. Okay. Wicked. Tasha, say it for me. I'm going to say it because, and I'm going to qualify it, Viva la raza, because they are going to use Kid Cash and have been using Kid Cash for what I said earlier about bringing all this hot class talent in. His job is to make people look better. Okay. So y'all are both going with that one? 
Yep. So am I. Chavo and Hernandez. Knockouts title match. Who cares versus don't give a damn. Maybo. Um, the one with the fake boobs. That narrows it down. Wicked. <laughs> Who is it really? Madison Rain and Tess Mocker. Tess Mocker. retains. Tosh, would you like yeah, to take... That, or yeah, should they're I do... bumping, so we have to at least acknowledge them. True. Tosh, would you like... I to... would say probably Tess Mocker because she's a Hooters girl. <sighs> Ooh, I want some Hooters now. I don't. Hooters I'd rather have, I'd rather have Buffalo Wild Wings. Or Papa Size. Well, you... Yeah, but you're legally contracted to say that. No, I'm not. <laughs> you are. I don't. I don't eat Hooters. No, 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 no. I don't eat Hooters that often because Hooters wings suck. Plain and simple. That is my opinion. Well, I'm married, so you know I don't eat Hooters. <laughs> then I'm, I'm, get cash. Get cash. <laughs> but you know what? I'm I'm single. I'm single, and I don't get to see Hooters at all unless they're my home. <laughs> I've tried to take you to the nudie bar, and you keep saying hell no. But from that yeah, vantage, because you're going to take me to some freaking dust till dawn freaking nudie bar where they're going <laughs> to bar the door and freaking I'm going to get vamped on. I don't want to get vamped because it's not as glamorous as they show it on True Blood. No, no <laughs> it's more like freaking dust till dawn where I'm going to be some crazy bat creature and some large black man from a '70s black exploitation movie is going to stab me with a pencil. And I'm going to die. Oh well, see, but you're half right because this can be one of those places where you have to pay. You have to get like ten dollars worth of food uh, just to be there. See, but for me, it's like this. I'm going to go ahead and say Madison Rain because I would rather see the person who actually knows how to carry a freaking match as opposed to no moving parts. Hooters girl, I'm sorry, Tess Mocker does not impress me. There's nothing there. It's all fluff, no stuff. It's all show, no go. And she has not got the ass to pull off the booty shorts, plain and simple. I'm throwing the sexist, misogynistic reference in there, too. It's my microphone. I can do it if I want to. Ball, uh, I'll, stuff her, I'll stuff her fluff if nobody will. Address all letters, too, and try to get him a date with this girl. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Bound for Glory Series, worth 20 points. Falls count anywhere. Anderson, Van Dam, Pope, Magnus, Mabo. Oof. I just... Uh, I'm going to say Van Dam. I'm going to say Van Dam. Wicked. Uh, uh, Anderson. Tosh? No, 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 no. Oh, I mean Anderson. <laughs> Be the ball. Uh, from that bit, <laughs> I'm going with the Pope. Trust me on this one. Bound for Glory Series match, 20 points on the line. Tables match, Jeff Hardy, James Storm, Bully Ray, and Robbie E. Mabo. Oh, uh, I'm going to say Bully. Wicked. Although, it's like I said last week, Robbie E will be the one to take the horrible, sick table spot. Okay. Wicked. Never go against a Dudley. Okay. Well, there's not a Dudley in the match. Bully Ray? Okay. Close enough. <laughs> Remember. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, my. They own. Are we going to use the His real own... name is Stanley Kubrick and. Oh, Jesus Christ. And can't Stanley direct Kubrick. a movie for crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We all know he's a Dudley. Who gives a rat? Eyes wide. Eyes Never wide. go against the Dudley. Eyes wide. Eyes shut. wide Dudley. Eyes wide Dudley. There you go. Ooh, we ought to copyright that. Tasha, would you like to weigh in? Well, first of all, I'm going to say that the loser is going to be the table. Okay. But I'm going to go with my boy, James Storm, because they are pushing James a little bit right now. Yes. I'm going to say James. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, I'm going to say Bully Ray. Uh, let's go with the ladder match. AJ, Angle, Daniels, Samoa Joe, Mabo. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to go with AJ. Okay, Wicked. AJ. Uh, okay, Tasha. I'm going to say that they'll probably put over AJ, but God, I would really love to see Christopher Daniels win because I think he's such a tremendous talent. I'm going with Samoa Joe. Um, because I think he's a tremendous talent and deserves the push. Um, deserves the rub, the oh, shine in this match. Well, hold on, though. Hold on. But, in Tasha's defense, can Joe rock a mantini like CD can? No, he can't. I have no idea, and I have no inclination <laughs> to find out. So, ho, there you go. So, for those of you who said it. I want to see Curry Man in the match. Oh, can we bring back Curry Man? Curry Man was awesome. I love Curry Man. World Heavyweight Championship match. Bobby Roode versus Austin Aries. Aries defending. Maybo. Oh. Uh, let's see. They just won it last month. Um, I'm going to say Austin. Wicked. Aries. Tasha. 
Austin Aries. I say tonight we find out that aces and eights are actually um, Robert Roode's little gimmick, and I'm saying that Austin Aries is sacrificed and Bobby Roode takes the belt back. Um, chance of the pay-per-view sucking on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it actually a 5. I actually think this could be a very solid pay-per-view if they pull this one off properly. Um, I would also like to go ahead and say one thing right off the bat. I think the ladder match is going to totally dominate, and I think the main event is gonna, is perfectly placed where it is. The World Championship match should be the premier match of the night. Thank you, CM Punk. I'm taking that gimmick and running with it like we've said it for a long time here on this show. Um, so I think, I'm going to disagree with you about match of the night. Okay, go ahead. The tag match is going to be match of the night. What, the Kid, uh, kid Cash Gunner? Huh? Yep, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, Phil Shatter yeah. is a wonderful professional wrestler. He's a good guy, too. He's a manager. Kid Cash is Kid Cash. You can't argue with it. Love him, hate him, or anything in between. He damn sure does his job. Charles uh, Guerrero, he's a Guerrero. You don't have to say anything else. Hernandez has more talent than they have ever let him show. Right. And that group of men in that ring tonight should have and could have, unless the powers that be will not allow it, the match of the night. There is more talent in that ring, in that match, than the rest of the card put together. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the top of the hour break, and when we return, professional wrestling star Nina Monet will be joining us right here on Beyond Ringside. Call your friends. The party continues right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Barons, and you're watching, you're listening, you're experiencing Beyond Ringside, and you are a better person for it. Trust me. Just when you think it can't get any more strange. No, we stay just as screwed up as they were. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside. Top of the hour, nine minutes after we've ran a little bit long on that network break. And I apologize for that. Fast study lane on this side of the control panel. Mabo, come on back in. I don't know what the hell's going on, but there's genitalia and anal play going on. And I'm not, I'm not involved. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I, this, needs, this needs to be on the dadgum you stream feed. No, it does not. <laughs> Here goes our PG-13 rating from hell. <laughs> Wicked Nemesis, come on back in. So, if somebody asked you to, a bag of cocks, I mean, how would those cocks be? Would they be upside down? Would it be a bunch of them? Would it be one? Would it be two? Would, they... would it be mocha tan lines? Would it be you no know, tan lines? No, what? Mocha, what? <laughs> mocha tan lines. And, we... I, I, mm. and will they all be pecking at the bag at the same time? Welcoming back in two-time NWA Women's Champion, Tasha Simone. Yes. The calm, rational voice of reason for the next two and a half seconds. Oops, time's up. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, our very special guest at this time, joining us professional wrestling star Nina Monet. Glad to have you in the house. Thank you. I'm glad to be on here. Now, let's go ahead and take it from square one, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. There is the signature question that I always like to ask people when they come on the show for the first time. There are two moments for everybody in the world of professional wrestling. And I do say pro wrestling enough. What's an attainment? Number one, the moment you became a fan of this business. Number two, oh. number two, it the moment where the little light bulb went on over your head and you said, I got to get into this. Yes. So, um, the, to answer the first question, definitely in middle school, I, you know, I was one of those kids running around talking about the rock, da, 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 da. I loved it. I was there during the whole thing. And then for number two, um, definitely when I was working with the Bullets, um, I saw them, I saw the energy and the charisma that they brought to the company um, of PCW and just to wrestling in general. And I was like, I have to be a part of this. Um, I debuted at Sacred Ground number two as the valet of uh, Marco Polo. And from that day on, I was like, this is something I have to do. This is something I must continue. I loved it. Maybo, come on board. Yes. 
who were some of your favorites growing up? Um, some of my favorites, uh, which I know it's going to sound cliche, but honestly, I love Lita and Trish. I love what, you know, all that that popped off between them. Lita came out like uh, <laughs> almost cursed, a firehouse. Like, seriously, she came out. She did what women weren't doing at the time. And Trish, like, I loved her, you know, coming from that background of being in the gym, being a fitness model. I saw what she was doing. She came in. You know, she was a little McMahon slut, whatever. But you know what? She came in. She did her thing. She got, she trained her ass off. And she got better. And she got in one of the best female feuds with Lita. And I was just like, you know what? I want that. I, I love, <laughs> who doesn't love women? But I love women. I love you know, entangling myself. That sounds very homoerotic, but I love getting into the, the little feuds, <laughs> um, fighting women, just showing off that physicality that they did. I just, ah, I loved it. So that's kind of my thing of growing up, and I saw that and wanted to be a part of it. Wicked Nemesis, come on board. Now, before you were a part of wrestling, you were also a fitness mom. Now you've done stuff, you know, in music videos, and you've also uh, done the, the uh, you know, layouts and spreads in XL magazine, uh, a lot, a lot of hip hop magazines, of course, you know, the source, this and that. Uh, what made you have the transition from being a fitness model to being uh, in the wrestling ring? Oh well, basically, you know, it was great to look good and everything. And I did want to be that role model. Like, I wasn't wanting to just, you know, shed all my clothing. It's nice to show your body. It's nice to show how good it feels to be in shape. But at the same time, it's not enough just to be in shape. Like, I want to show that I, you know, what I want to say. I basically wanted to show that I can be up there. I can be with these workers. I can go. I can, you know, <laughs> trying to think of what I want to say. Um basically show that you can do anything you want. If you want to jump from the top rope, if you want to hurt Karana somebody, you know, be that person. Commit to it. Go for it. Just basically show that you're the ish, you know? So that's kind of my thing. I want to be out there. I want to show little girls, you know, this is what you can do when you grow up. This is what how you can be. You can be in shape. You can be everything, but you can be out there with dudes just as bad as they are. Whatever they can do, you can do better. And that, is, again, it goes back. I love saying Lita. It's a cliche, but Lita is that girl. Lita is really that girl. So, yeah, that's my thing. So it would be fair to say that as you conquered the world of fitness model modeling and being part of the physical fitness movement, you also wanted to show that you could be physical right along with the best of them, right? Yes. Not just look good, but be good. Now, therein lies a, a solid question. Because coming from one world where it is a very rigid schedule, you always have to take care of yourself and you have to be in tip top shape in order to really exceed or succeed in the modeling industry. But you make the move into the world of professional wrestling. Were you really prepared? Were you surprised? I should say, were you surprised at, at the level of physicality that's involved in the world of pro wrestling? I was, you know, I was at first, but it's something that I quickly adapted to. It's something that I quickly wanted to learn. I saw uh, just the, especially the technicality of those who were doing the wrestling. I, I just wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to uh, show that that was something that I can get into, that was something that I could hang with, and that continues to be my goal right now. Matter of fact, let me bring the champion, Tasha Simone, with Nina Monet. Dana, are you a Barbie? I am not a Barbie. Please believe I'm down to get dirty, ma'am. No, I, I am. Think. Let me explain something to you. Lita is a joke. Trish is a joke. I dare you to name three women in professional wrestling that are professional wrestlers. And I was about to say, yes, they are, you know, what they did, what they had to do to be in WWE. Like I told you, uh, Trish came from being a slut or whatever, and she had to play her role. Because you, you ask. Get that right. You don't tell me anything. You ask. Just because we are tag team partners this weekend, 
Don't make any mistake about it. We're not friends. I am using. I understand. Well, I understand. Your goal is it. If I talk here, don't talk over me, little girl. Explain. Understand what I'm telling you. I am Tasha Effing Simone. I am the NWA Women's World Champion. Calm like a bomb, Pandora is in my crosshairs. Yes, and I respect that. And please believe, I am asking Nina Simone. I am Nina Simone, and I'm sorry, Nina Monet. And the point, the point is, like, I do respect the feud that's going on between you and Pandora, and I'm ready to see that because you know what? I'm with you. Are you not hearing, sweetie? All you are doing right now is telling me I was a fan of Lita. I was a fan of Trish. You and Tracy Taylor may have targets on your back this Saturday, too. I'm not your friend. I am your enemy. I am Tracy Taylor. I understand. Taylor. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and I'm totally with you. Like, I love, you know, I love that Pandora took me out of her wing. I love that, you know, she showed me the ins and outs of wrestling. There are the buggy, you know, there are the buggies, there are the fans of who are tearing it up in indie wrestling, and they're going, you know, they're getting these contracts, and they're bringing back wrestling to the women's wrestling of these higher name organizations. I respect the few that's going on between you and Pandora, but you know what? I am going to get my you know, my stuff out there, I am going to try my best to show that to show Pandora that her training did not go to waste. Actually, because she trained me, I'm going to come back and show her that I can take over where she left off and let her know that it, 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 the business will be in safe hands with the younger generation. We are coming back. We are making this business. Who has constantly left women out of, of the better side of this business, we're coming back. Oh, no, please believe. We're about to... Hmm? Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, what did you say now? Left, uh, while you're talking with your little squeaky voice, sweetie, do you know why women are left out of the business? Because they're not putting in the effort. That's my thing. No, That's the reason why I can't do it. They're going out and they're trying to look good. I look good, but that is not my goal. My goal is to sit here and tell girls, you can look good, whatever. But the point is, if you want something bad enough, you're going to put forth the effort, you're going to put in the work, and you're going to show people what you can do, not just how good you can look, because anybody can sit there and walk around the ring, prance a little ass around, and look all pretty and shit and stuff. But I'll tell you what, half those girls can't work as well as you in Pandora. And Tracy is another person who works just as well. And you know what? She looks good, but she puts in the work. And that's why I am not afraid to sit there and face them, especially with you by my side. I am not afraid to face the both of them. Let me jump Tracy in. Tracy Taylor puts in the work. You want me to tell you what Tracy Taylor does? She works like a WWE wrestler on the independent circuit. Tracy, if you're stupid enough to get in the ring with me, sweetheart, you won't have to worry about facial expressions. I'm going to be real. I need to jump in for a oh, second. Oh, no, no, no. Please believe. Please believe. By being trained by Pandora, oh, they're going, the facial expressions don't have to be fake. No, please believe. You're going to, not you, personally, but uh, whoever I go against, that, that pain will be real. <laughs> I'm not out to break anybody's bones. I'm not out to injure anybody, but just to show that I'm one of the best on the circuit at the moment. So you were trained by Pandora? I was. So I was trained by Pandora. Pandora. I'm sorry? So what's the beef with you and Pandora? Why aren't you teaming with her? Because I love being under her wing, but at this point in time, it's time for me to move out on my own. And I believe that there are things that I can do that she's now holding me back from. And I just want to prove to her that, again, that training is not going to waste. There is some, there's a fire behind me, and it's coming for her. Like, if she's going to stand in my way, she's going to get caught up in that fire. I respect her as a wrestler. I respect her as a brother that she is because she can get down and dirty. But you know what? I can too. And that's my thing. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. I'm going to show up. I'm going to face you, and I'm going to take you down because I'm going to rise to the top. And I just, I believe that there are people behind me looking forward to that rise to the top. Now, if I can jump in for a second, 
And this is something that I need to go ahead and bring up. You brought her up in passing. But Tracy Taylor, the island girl. Now, you, Tasha, you made reference to WWE Developmental, which she has I been a part of. And from that vantage point, she's also been away from that for a while. And she has faced some very stiff competition. There have been a number of women who have come down the pike, whether it be Global Championship Wrestling or other promotions, that Tracy has stepped up and taken, I don't want to say a purely vicious attitude, but I say that she has become probably, over the time that I've worked with her, 15 times more aggressive inside the ring. She does have a very solid win at all cost attitude, and that is something that I'm going to sit back. I've got to sit back and say this. You've made the reference to just basically that first part, but is there a possibility? And I'm asking both of you this. Nina, I'm going to ask you to go first. Is there a chance that you might be underestimating because of a narrow focus? Nina? No, I, I've trained under her. I know her moves, you know. I know what to look for. And to be honest, she caught me off, you know, she caught me off guard at our first GCW match. But I'm ready for her. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to take her on. Okay. Tracy Taylor, too. Tracy Taylor tried to call me out at the last GCW. But you know what? She bit off more than she could chew. And I'm ready. Tasha? I never underestimate anyone. I am methodical. My first match with Pandora was not what anyone thinks it is. It was um, three times. And now I know. And now, unlike any other champion in the world, people will find out I do not have a target on my back. My opponents do. And anyone who gets in my way will be a casualty of war. Be it Tracy Taylor, be it Nina Monet, be it the referee, be it Wicked Nemesis, sorry little brother, be it Eric Andrews if he tries to pull me off of somebody, or Derek Neal, or even you, fascinating lane. I play the most dangerous game of cat and mouse as any professional wrestler that climbs in the ring. The mouse is ready for the kill now. And I am going to enjoy taking my teeth in. Now, you bring up a very valid argument. And I have to put this one out there. You bring up simply perfection. Don't forget... Tracy is also a very she is the first lady of the underground Hello. Micah Taylor Hello. Aiden Solo Xander Stone Hello. Mudbone Hello. Hello. there's a numbers game in place not really and this is something that I would actually say that if Derek and Eric are going to be at ringside with you and Nina I wouldn't be surprised if the underground came out and what are they going to do? I don't seem to understand I've told this with perfection not to get involved okay I have told them and even if they do get involved like please that. believe okay hmm. we, we can just come on back on board Why are you trying to drag me into this cat fight? Let's drag me into this. <laughs> oh, it's not a cat fight. If you want to get yourself involved too, Wicked, you can get some too. Because there's another wild card involved in this equation, and that would be the manager and uh, manager and spiritual advisor of Calm Like a Bomb Pandora, my tag team partner on this very show, the Wicked Nemesis. You're exactly right. Because you can bring out whoever you want to, because there's one X factor in this entire equation, and it's me. And I'm just going to tell you all how it is. There's one person in this entire equation that I have the best interest in mind. And we all know it's calm like a bomb, Pandora. You all know that. And But Tasha, don't worry. 
if if it looks like Tracy Taylor's whipping your ass a little too much, I will save you because I got to have you at least at a hundred percent for uh for September eighth. Tracy Taylor fears me. You, I guarantee, you, if you walked into a room with her now and said my name. Not only would you see the fear on her face, you would smell the fear rolling off of her persona. Now, taking things full circle, Nina. Yes, sir? Coming back into realm for just a few minutes. We've had a chance to find out a little bit about, a little bit about your background. You also have opened up about the fact that Pandora was partially responsible for some of your training. Yes. When you hit the ring, when you take a look at your opponent, does your mindset change when you realize whether or not it's somebody who has a varied level of experience per se? If you're seeing somebody who is also who is a rookie in the industry as opposed to a veteran, when you look across the ring, how does your mindset change on an opponent by opponent basis? You know, not to be mean spirit or anything, but if you're, if you're not on the level of Pandora, then I'm, I'm not going to take you seriously. I'm going to do what I have to because, you know, that's how I shine. But to be honest, if you're on the level of Pandora, I'll respect you and I will come at you just as I'm going to come at her. I'm going to come at you with a level of intelligence. I'm going to know my partner um, as well as my enemy before I even get in the ring. Other than that, like, no, like, what do you want me to say? You can't hang with me outside of Pandora and above. Like, you can't hang with me. Folks, do me a favor. We're gonna hang. Th- oh, we're gonna go through the break real quick. Nina, can you hang with us through the break? Yes, sir. Folks, we'll be back in five right here on Beyond Ringside Live. Stay tuned. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Sunday night, 23 before the top of the hour. Past Eddie Lane behind the control panel. Nabo had to jump off for a second. Wicked is changing venues right now. Should be calling back in in just a couple of seconds. Um, anything can happen around here. I'd like to welcome back in National Wrestling Alliance Women's World Champion Tasha Simone. Hello. And I want, I, I want to go ahead and, and introduce our other person. And then I want to clear the air about something real quick. Okie dokie. Like to welcome back in professional wrestling star Nina Monet. Nina, welcome back in. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. My squeaky voice. <laughs> you know, it's been a really crazy day here, and I know that we've got so many different things going on because I know, Nina, you've got a great schedule working. Tasha, you've got a great schedule working, and I know the two of you are going to be in my backyard on Saturday, August the 18th with Global Championship Wrestling. It is a ladies' tag team challenge match. And the fact of the matter is, as it stands, it will be the two of you against the Island Girl Tracy Taylor and Calm Like a Bomb Pandora. Now, Nina, you are no stranger to Pandora. And you're getting okay. you're getting an opportunity to learn more and more about Tracy Taylor. And this it seems like this is going to be an un, almost an uneasy partnership between you and Tasha coming up on the 18th. And I'm going to go ahead and lay a card on the table, and I'm going to ask. You've made the statement in a previous part of the interview about rising to the occasion and definitely keep making sure that everybody's on the same level as far as when they, when you step into the ring. You look at everybody the same. It's like you're going down. When you look to your side and see a current reigning women's world champion as your tag team partner, What's going through your head, knowing who you've got across the ring from you? I'm ecstatic, and I know that I'm well protected by her. I've seen her. She is ferocious in the ring. She, I've seen uh, matches between her and Pandora before, and I really believe that I'm in, uh, you know, I'm in hands. I'm in with the woman who can take care of the job, who can be by my side, who can take her out as well as Tracy Taylor and I'm loving it Um, so far as do I fear her I understand that she is vicious 
I will stay out of her way, then I will let her do her thing, but I just, I'm there to support her. Tasha Simone, same question. Well, the truth is, Eddie, not to take away from anybody, I don't even care if Nina doesn't want to be my partner. I would take them both on by myself. And I don't want anybody else there listening to make any mistakes about what I'm saying about Teresa Taylor. Because I've most certainly been in the ring with her. Do I think Tracy is a good wrestler? Yes. Do I think she's Pandora? No. Do I think if push comes to shove, she has the vicious intensity and tenacity that Pandora does? No. If Tracy gets in the ring with me, second verse will be the same as the first. Only this time, there is a whole lot more on the line. She needs to forget what she learned in WWE developmental. And this Saturday night in Salt City, Alabama, Tracy Taylor needs to remember she's a professional wrestler. Wicked Nemesis, come on back on board. Is it safe? Yes. Okay. Just you? making sure I didn't know if there were like bombs over Baghdad going on. Uh, you know, it's Nina. Nina. Nina's new to this business. You know, she's you know she's been up and down Georgia and you know a few places in Alabama. You know, making sure that that she's able to keep her name out there. You know, and get, and get, establish a name for herself. But you're in the ring with the NWA Women's World Champion. You're in with Tracy Taylor. You're in with Calm Like a Bomb Pandora. Nina, uh, what do you think and what do you feel that you bring extra to this that already isn't established in this tag match? Um, Well, along with Pandora, I have been trained by Steven, who has trained, you know, Dobie Richards and some of the uh, top technical wrestlers of our day, including Fred, who I think is a very understated, I'm sorry, underestimated wrestler. Um, I Pandora is a brawler. I would like to uh, take myself as somebody who is trying to go to that technical, uh, you know, that technical level, that technical spirit. Um, And I think that's something that Pandora is not expecting. And if she underestimates me, I'm ready to (laughs) surprise her and take her out. I have a question, Nina. In this industry, what is your ultimate goal? (laughs) <laughs> just to be, uh, you know, larger than life, not trying, to, I do want to say modest, but honestly, honestly, just to become that figure that girls look up to, you know, I've always wanted a role model as a child myself, and I want somebody to be there in the eyes of little girls, letting them know again, I think I said this around the beginning, just to be that somebody who encouraged them to do whatever you want to do, to put your foot out there, to be as strong as men. There, um, I think Tasha touched on this. There is no difference between men and women wrestlers. There is wrestling. Whatever those dudes can do, we can do better. We're smarter. We're better. We're more agile. We are the top, the ish, the best. And that's just all there is. Now, I'm going to twist the question just a little bit. And I'm doing this with Tasha on the on the air for a reason. What about championships? Oh, those are definitely a goal. Those are definitely a goal. That lets you know that you made it. That is the cherry on the ice cream, you know? That is tops. That is, I don't, I don't know how to say it, that is... That is the tears at the end of the road. You make that race, you become first place, and you cry when they put that belt around your waist because you are so proud to hold that name, that role, and that position. And that's what I look forward to. Now, you kind of answered this next one, but I want to put you on the spot a little bit deeper. 
because we all on this show we look at ourselves in this industry whether I'm in the role of commissioner or announcer Wicked Nemesis as a manager Tasha as a professional and as a champion we're all ambassadors of this business when people look at Nina Monet now and let's say five years down the road what kind of ambassador for professional wrestling is Nina Monet? Hmm. Um, I bet I haven't mentioned this, but I am from North New Jersey, Brick City, you know, the inner city. The ambassador that I want to be, and I just continue to emphasize this, is just somebody for little girls, especially little girls out of the inner city. And it sounds so bullshitty, but seriously, they need somebody. They need somebody letting them know that no matter what position you come out of, what situation you come out of, you can do whatever you want. I want to be that ambassador, somebody to bring back, uh, not to bring back, but just to continue to build on women's wrestling and wrestling as uh, as a whole. Just, I don't know, just the um, God... <laughs> Guide children, I guess, um, just to let them know that that path is there. That path of being the best is there. Nina, you you talked about coming out of Brick City. I mean, out of New Jersey. This is not just the your run of the mill ghetto. I mean, this is Brick City, New Jersey, where where it's so ghetto that everything is brick. It's the name, <laughs> and you. You go and you become a fitness model, very established fitness model. You make the jump to wrestling successfully, or you know, or you're starting to have success. I guess I should say. Uh, do you think that after overcoming everything you did to climb out of Brick City, that that maybe this is just a wrestling match that you feel like you can hold your own against the NWA Women's World Champion, against Kyle Mockingbottle Pandora, and against Tracy Taylor? Do you, do you feel like that? Do you think that making that run uh, will help you at all in this match? Um, trust, trust and believe. <laughs> if I can survive the streets of Brick City, if I can sit there and uh, you know make it out of the north, make it out of you know whatever dead end situation is there, I can do whatever I want. I can come into a match. I can show women how tough I am, how much I can stand my ground, and I really do believe that this is a match that will make me. Now, if I may, folks, once again, these two ladies will be a part of a great tag team match scheduled for Saturday night, August the 18th, in Pell City, Alabama, with Global Championship Wrestling. Now, Tasha, I know you've also got additional dates coming up on your schedule. Nina, where else can um, where can people find you in the upcoming days? In addition to Pell City, well, every Friday I am at Platinum Championship Wrestling, which has been taken over by Empire, and Empire has hired the Classical Crown Royal Jewel Records as a part of their entourage. So I am a part of Crown Jewel Records. I will be there every Friday. I will be supporting Marco Polo as well as uh, participating in my own matches. Because I am determined to show Pandora that I should be the leading lady in Empire and Platinum Champion Wrestling. Platinum Championship Wrestling, I apologize. Um, and not only did we do it at Avondale Estates every Friday at 8, but we also take it to Portadale. We take it to Portadale. We show uh, the athletes that we are at Portadale every first and third Sunday. Um, and you can always catch me there. And as things become available, I will let you know. Sounds cool. Tasha Simone, upcoming dates? Well, as everyone knows, this very Saturday night, we'll be coming to Alabama to take a look like we do everywhere else. And September the 8th, Lebanon, Tennessee, 220 East. Ice Street. The match of the year will take place right then, right there in Lebanon, Tennessee. Rumor has it that there may be some very, 
very important people from the NWA there that night. That is only a rumor, it is not confirmed. I will be stepping in the ring with a uh, home like a bomb Pandora, but this is not going to be just any little bitty match. It is a no hold card. Call count anywhere, which means if we wind up in the middle of the street or over at the police station, the fall is still going to count when shoulders touch one, two, three. But that's not what's going to end this match. Somebody is going to be left in rain. They won't be walking out. That is a guarantee. Beyond that, there are plans for myself, especially you know that I work as a booking agent for this person. Um, we are working on traveling right now. There, are, there is a, a Texas trip in the works, possibly NWA Mountain State. There are so many changes going on in the NWA right now. It's a little unpredictable right now. We are very excited to see what the NWA has, has going for us. If they give us our schedule, because I'm not the only one putting schedules out now, they are now giving us our schedule. And if there is a survivor, and this is a little bit of a, um, how shall we say this, a surprise, there may be a War Games match in the future this month for my son, I call my mom, and as well. <laughs> Before we run, let me go ahead and say this. Wicked Nemesis, you have had a chance to listen to commentary by both Tasha Simone and by Nina Monet as it pertains to this Saturday night in Pell City with GCW. I know you can't speak for Tracy Tegley because you're not her manager. You're not part of the underground. However, I know you can speak for Calm Like a Bomb Pandora. And who is Calm Like a Bomb Pandora part of? The MOD. Exactly. So let's just take a second. Let's just let's just ease back for a second, ladies and gentlemen. August eighteenth. We have Tracy Taylor, who a lot still have been you know, Tracy's a vet in this business, but maybe nobody's talking as much about her as they should. But Tracy's done a lot in GCW. And yes, she has the underground for a backing. That is true. But the underground can't save your soul. Nina Monet, former fitness model, making her name all across the Southeast. Nina Monet stepping up to the plate, not backing down for the NWA Women's World Champions. I would consider that confident. Some would consider it suicide but Nina is her own woman and then you have the NWA Women's World Champion my big sis and say what you want to the woman has done things that guys have not been done in this business her longest reign in NWA history and here she is coming to Pell City Alabama the Pell City Civic Center August 18th. She is coming down for one reason and one reason only. And it's not to spite myself, her little brother. No, no, no. And yes, it is true. They come September 8th. There will be somebody very important in Lebanon, Tennessee for the NWA. And that's your future NWA Women's World Champion and Queen of the MLD. I'm like a bomb Pandora. That's what it is. You're all this. You're all that. You're all badass. You're all this. All three of you. But you're not talking bomb Pandora. You're Thomas Sloan, one of the greatest champions the NWA has ever seen. But you're not calling like a bomb Pandora. Nina Monet, one of the greatest fitness models, one of the greatest hip hop diva women of all time in videos. Nelly, 50 Cent, Ice Cube, you've done it all. Red man, method man, but you're not calm like a bomb Pandora. Tracy Taylor has toured all around this world. She's done internet pay-per-views with Shine. She's done a few things with NWA Hollywood. She's done things at Saw. She's done things here. She's done things there. She's done things in other continents. But she's not calm like a bomb Pandora. 
there are two classes going on. You have Tracy in the underground against everybody because the underground only cares about themselves. Then there's Calm I Can Bomb Pandora and Rena Del Pile Driver herself, my big sis, the NWA was world champion, Tasha Simone. And yes, the preeminent manager NWA will be there. And not only will I be the X Factor for GCW come August 18th in this tag team, but also I have a contingency plan for Simply for Perfection come September 8th. I'm not going to show you my hand. I don't have the dead man's hand. Oh, no, 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 indeed. I always carry a few tricks up my sleeve. I always pull the strings. And I will unveil my contingency plan when need be. The merchants of death always have our tentacles and our tendrils outreach throughout all of wrestling. And both of you ladies know this. Both of you ladies are great. Nina, you've done a lot in this business in a short period of time. Tasha, you are a living legend. But on the 18th, I said this to you before. It's all about no matter what, no matter if this is a tight team, it's still about one thing, about that title you hold around your waist. The crown jewel of the NWA. What makes the real queen of professional wrestling. No matter what, this is it. Tasha Simone coming down here. This is the NWA Women's World Champion Tasha Simone coming down here. So that's what it's about. And your reign has been superb. Your reign has been awesome. But in the game of thrones, you either win or you lose. There's no middle ground. And the queen of professional wrestling will be the queen of the merchants of death. Calm like a bomb. Pandora, the game of thrones. That's what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, first off, I want to say a very special thank you to our special guests during these segments. Real quick. Cast to be on ringside will be in full force in more ways than one in Pell City, Alabama, Saturday night, August the 18th. Yours truly, of course, GCW Commissioner and one of the announced team, Wicked Nemesis, Managing Pandora. There is a rumor that there may just be a Mark Mabo Bowman sighting and possibly a two-ton sighting. And who knows who else may just make it out to this show. Like I said, they're rumors. you got to be there to find out. Nina Monet. Thank you for coming on and joining us during the during the segment. Greatly appreciate it. Great to have you on board. Look forward to having you back on again sometime. Thank you for having me. Tasha Simone, always a pleasure. Of course, everybody's entitled to my opinion. <laughs> Hang tight. Yours truly, Wicked Nemesis, and Mark Mabo Bowman will be back in five right here on Beyond Ringside Live. Set and ready to roll. Three minutes past the top of the hour. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside Live Edition Sunday night. Three minutes after 8 Central, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain. And I think it's about 2 o'clock in the morning over in England where the Olympics have finally wrapped up. So, <laughs> Team USA men's basketball, gold medal. Yeah, I did kind of doubt for a second because I thought Spain was going to come from behind and kick their tails more than once. They had an excellent game plan. And lo and behold... Team USA, Coach K, and Team USA Women's Gold Medals, Coach Oriyama. Tremendous squad to work with. (laughs) Both teams just had so much talent. Speaking of so much talent, more talent than I've got active brain cells. Mark Bowman, come on back in, Mabo. Yeah. Exactly. Allegedly, (laughs) allegedly too. Wicked Nemesis, come on back in. Thank you, uh, Nick, for coming on. Uh, Tasha, thank you for uh, for keeping your claws in, in your paws, so to speak. <laughs> Tasha Simone, welcome back in. That's, uh, I was trying to be nice. Oh, you, you were nice. You were nice. See, I, I have a phrase that I've been using over the last couple of years. And this goes for my particular role in this business right now. I'm baby faced by casting. I'm heel by heart. That's the only way that I can say it. And I'm just mean. 
that's what I mean. I'm, I, let me be me, and I'd be a happy person most of the time. But no, I got to be freaking babyface all the freaking time now. But <laughs> I would make a great probation officer. <laughs> no comment. You probably assign me I homework. I would make a great probation officer. Dang it! You would probably assign me homework in between visits. Yes, I would. Look up three cases. He needed it. <laughs> look Dang up. It. Look up three cases. <laughs> That's right. You just convinced me. I'm going to go turn. I'm going to start back to school and become a criminal justice major. I will be the number one prosecutor in the state. Now. A couple of things I want to hit on before we go to last call and shameless plugs because we're about to bail out of here for the night. First off, a lot of great things going on, folks. I know you hear me talk about it, and I'm about to change my work schedule to where we can start working on the calendar again. Um, one thing that we've got a very strong focus on is the upcoming Chikara show. Uh, the King of Trios especially is one thing that's got our attention. With all this, all the diversity that is in the t- uh, the trios division coming into the king of trios event for chikara it's just absolutely going to be electric um ring of honor with their pay-per-view now in the books and there are some exciting times both on the television level aside from monday thursday friday as well as the iPay-Per-View side, because you've got a lot of companies that are taking advantage and using iPay-Per-Views now. Chikara does it on occasion. ROH does it. Um, CZW does it. Dragon Gate USA does it. And there are some great companies out there. And when you get a chance to catch one of the iPay-Per-Views, a lot of these iPay-Per-Views are only coming in at fourteen ninety nine and twenty dollars, and they are stacked to the gills, loaded with talent. Now. Mabo, if I say the words King of Trios and Loaded with Talent, how quickly would you agree with me on that? Before you even said Loaded. You've had a chance to look over part of the lineup, haven't you? I've looked over everything that's been released. If there's one team that grabs your attention right now, buddy, what is it? Uh, on what aspect? On who's going to take it? Who's coming in? I mean, what? you got? Who's coming in? Specific. Who's coming in? Oh, we ain't got that kind of time, son. I'm sorry. I'll tell you that right now. We ain't okay. got that kind of time. Okay, without showing bias toward or sliding any other team that's out there, what's the first team? When you were scrolling down the list of entries, what is the first team that just made you sit back and say, holy crap? Um, as far as just being on the show, yeah. Uh, if and, and, and everybody knows that Chikara is always subject to change. Well, especially when it comes to the King of Trios. Yeah. Um, I would definitely have to say the one that stood out was the what is known as the Faces of Pain, which is the Warlord, the Barbarian, and Ming. Um, just to see that those guys are going to be back. And then also Team WWF, which, you know, they, they pulled it off to an extent last year, but it will be actually the 1-2-3 kid. It will be Aldo Montoya, and it will be Tatanka. You know, not as you know him as Justin Incredible or X Pac or whatever. It will be those three, right? Um, as far as you know, those are just really kind of standing out. I think, I, I think, um, with the breaking up of of the swarm or with the mingling or the commingling, as we are told in the produce department, uh, of uh, the colony and the swarm, that's going to be interesting. But I think this year it's going to be a. Uh, might actually be uh, Quack, Jigsaw, and Manami Toyota. I know they had a, you know, that's that's just my, you know, my, Manami Toyota doesn't do but maybe a handful of shows each year in the United States. And I think she's only doing one this year, and it's going to be King of Trios. Now, so I, I, as far as what's listed right now, I'm going to say Manami Toyota. Now, that, uh, you know, Quack and Jigsaw. It does kind of lead me to an interesting question that I want your input on first, and then I'm going to turn to Tasha for her input. And Wicked, you're batting cleanup on this one. Noticing the fact of how many women are genuinely involved in KOT this year, is that a representative fact of how much deeper the talent pool is becoming in women's wrestling to where they can do that and be comfortable doing it? Um... Well, I mean, you don't really see too many representatives from Mexico or the U.K., but like I said, they're not through – I don't believe they're through pulling teams yet. Um, 
I know uh, the Team Sendai girls. I've, you know, done a little bit of research on them. Um, and then, of course, uh, Team J- JWP. Uh, like I said, I've done my research, especially when it's ever uh, new to me, uh, new uh, female talent shows up, I'll definitely take a, a vested interest, because, especially when they come from out of the state, or I mean, out of the uh, US. country. So, um, I, I think it's, it's it, it, on uh, uh, Chikara. On Chikara's, um, you know, just their whole behalf and everything, They, uh, the fact that they're pulling, you know, so much from Japan, it does really show that they're they take this serious and that they are looking for depth in the roster. Once again, not too much uh, showing from Europe or from, uh, you know, any places like Canada or uh, Mexico. But, uh, but like I said, there's still I, I think there's still one or two more teams to announce. But depth, you know, to actually include, you know, not just one, but two all-woman teams, just uh, it does speak volumes. Tasha Simone, your thoughts? I don't think that, that the talent is getting over women. I think that it is people are paying attention to the talent that was already there a little bit more. I mean, Minami Toyota, come on. That is not a new name to professional wrestling. It is just that people are starting to pay attention. The Sendai girls really are not new. They're new to the United States. They're not new to professional wrestling. The fact that the women that are coming in, for the most part, um, you're not seeing a lot of in the United States is what's speaking volumes the most. We need to pick up our talent here. We need to make sure that our women know what they're doing in the ring. The talent pulls there. We just got to jump in. Wicked nemesis. Well, it's not since you pushing, you know, women uh, uh, that can actually wrestle. That's good. Uh, as you all know, I'm not very familiar with uh, Chikar as a whole, but they're always about bringing in, you know, a few teams that are great wrestlers, and I'm glad and I'm glad that the King of Trios exists. So kudos to them, and let's just hope that they, they do tons of work. You know, uh, they've got some great some great talent there so you know and like I said there are so many shows that I really want to talk about but we're actually about 15 minutes over right now and we could easily go for another hour just going on different shows around the United States much less trying to tackle the UK Germany um, Japan uh, even Mexico the events that are going on down there and I think that's going to be a definite topic for an upcoming show where we look at a more international flair as appears as opposed to just working around the lower 48 or the you know the the little home base US but for this vantage point I will go ahead and say Mark Bowman last call I uh, don't have a last call I got a dib so if y'all will handle my shameless plugs and all that um Eddie, what time do you usually wrap up uh, GCW? Uh, about 11 o'clock, 11.15. All right. Uh, I'm going to shoot you a text if I'm still awake. Uh, I'll get with you then. But i got to go. Something's come up. It's no big deal. So don't don't worry, guys. But i got to go check on something. Okay, I'll buddy. I'll you later. Y'all have a good night. Bye. Appreciate you, brother. Wicked Nemesis, last call. The To Be Determined show this Wednesday, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will continue this discussion. Session about August 18th at GCW Pell City Civic Center. And of course, September 8th, uh, what is the upcoming with that? So, and that, that's uh, Thank you, Nina, for coming on. Nina, uh, Nina has her work cut out for her, but I believe she's up to the task for what's at hand for her for August 18th. Do you want to go and pop shameless plugs now? Uh, Wicked Nemesis Enoch. On YouTube, hopefully this YouTube video will be up soon, and I can re-upload it. And make sure you check out Eddie's uh, side of the coin, <laughs> or my side of the coin, I guess is what it's called. Yeah, my well, side of the coin. Uh, that that's funny. And make sure you mention me a thousand times in your stuff. That's all. These should be determined to TNT Radio dot net Wednesday 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. You got it, buddy. Tasha Simone, open call, thoughts, opinions. 
Last call. Oh, I'm going to do it just really, really easy this time. I want all wrestling fans and all wrestling promoters to band together and say enough with the soap opera. Let's put professional wrestling back in the professional wrestling ring. That's it for me tonight. Shameless plugs? Shameless plugs, Tasha Simone at Tasha Simone, NWA on Twitter. Facebook.com backslash Tasha dot Simone one. You can find me if you want to book Tasha Simone or simply perfection. You can contact me at Tasha Simone and WA at gmail.com. Serious inquiries only, please. And of course, you can always find beyondringside.com. We got the server back under control, and actually, I finally got the uh, web design program to work. So, dot com will be updated on a more recent, regular basis. Thanks for playing. And thank you for your patience. It's just been hell around here ever since the last computer crash. It really has. Um, at beyond, yeah, at beyond ringside over on face, over on Twitter. God, I got so scrambled for a second there for no reason whatsoever. Time to go drink a green monster. At beyond ringside on Twitter. Facebook.com slash beyond ringside live. We do have Facebook.com slash beyond ringside, but somehow or another, we ended up with 5,519 friends over there with over 1,200 people waiting to be approved. Please go to the fan page, click like, because there is content that is being put up there as well as the friend page. You can get in touch with us by a messaging on the fan page, and I promise we'll see it. If you ask me if we're taking bookings as in a pro wrestling show, I will quickly remind you that we are Beyond Ringside Sports Radio, not the wrestling promotion called Beyond Wrestling. There is a difference. From that vantage point, yours truly, at Fast Eddie Lane over on Twitter, facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane's the fan page. Click over and say like. I uh, want to say a very special hello to my partners in chaos with the Birmingham Barons. Um, my boss with the Barons got in touch with me um, last night to let me know that this coming Tuesday will be the final um, Monday, Tuesday homestand that I will actually be able to be a part of for this year because of scheduling. And I just want to say real quick from the bottom of my heart to our general manager, Jonathan, all the way through the press box in the office to Kurt Bloom, the voice of the Birmingham Barons on radio, um, Furco, David, um, AA, and especially Nick, my direct supervisor with the Barons, and everybody who's worked with me in the press box this year, my tag team partner on the PA, BR and um, Derek Scudder, everybody has been absolutely tremendous this season. I know we didn't have, the, we don't, we really don't have the record that we deserve to have because we put out some tremendous baseball. The guys on the diamond have done a phenomenal job this year. Just we've come up short a couple of times and had a couple of things not go our way, and our record does not show the talent level that we genuinely have on the field. We've had some tremendous players this year, and it's been an absolute honor and a privilege to be a part of the Barons organization this year up in the press box, them allowing me to ply my trade as the stadium announcer on the Monday and Tuesday home games. And I know I'm sounding maudlin, but this is also an, another one because this Tuesday night will be my final game unless something changes at Regents Park with the Birmingham Barons. We're getting ready to move to a brand new field starting next season. So, yeah, I've had the privilege of being inside that press box for the last four years, and I've had a great time doing it. And if I'm fortunate enough to be asked back and invited back, uh, you're damn right. I will be there for the new season, for the 2013 season over at Regions Field in Birmingham, and I'm really looking forward to it. So, once again, to everybody with the Barons, thank you. Uh, Wednesday night, I will be back with Papa Sayas and Helena. Looking forward to that party. It's always a great time on Wednesdays. Thursday nights, Buffalo Wild Wings in Hoover, 9 p.m. start. Buffalo Wild Wings, Alabaster on Friday, 10 p.m. start. And we've talked about it Saturday night. Pell City, Alabama, Global Championship Wrestling. I'm back with the GCW family. It's a stacked card. We focused on one match in particular, and I want to remind everybody, in about 40 minutes from right now, I will be co-hosting GCW Radio alongside of Ted Guinness, O'Hagan, and J.J. Tanner. Uh, we've got Mad Dog Dan, um, Dan Sawyer slated to come on. GCW Heavyweight Champion Micah Taylor coming on. The Island Girl Tracy Taylor coming on. Um, one half of the tag champions, Aiden Solo coming on. Trevor Eon coming on. We've got a lot of great stars from Global Championship Wrestling, GCW, and The Underground at 9 Central, 10 Eastern. You can listen to that show right here on Beyond Ringside dot com.
It's just that easy. Chat room will be open and available through the um, GCW Ustream site. Go to facebook.com slash GCW Pro Wrestling to find out a little bit more and catch up on the chat room as well. Folks, we're going to be back at it next Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Central. We are already putting things in works, and I think we've actually got interviews lined up for both hours. I've had a great time today, and I hope you've had a great time, too. Um, JL Gothos, thank you for coming through the chat room. Zerdreas, thank you for coming through. Um, Daryl B., always great to see you in the chat room. To everybody who's come through the chat, there were more names, but I didn't get a chance to see everybody because I just saw in, out, in, out. Um, or I would turn around as they were leaving. So I apologize for not mentioning more names. I just didn't get a chance to write them down. So once again, please bear with me on that. And I do appreciate it. Really, I do. Um, the best of Beyond Ringside is available through beyondringside.com on a 24-hour-a-day basis. You can listen to recent episodes and recent interviews right there. And we are also uploading through Ustream and YouTube, as Wicked Nemesis made a reference to a minute ago. And, of course, all episodes are available for download through iTunes. Uh, let's play the music. Let's take it home. Hold on, let me switch headsets. I forgot. I have one, not two. There we go. From that vantage point, I will say, Beyond Ringside is a court low media distribution enterprise in more ways than I've got active brain cells. <laughs> Nina Monet, thank you again for coming on board. Great to have you on with us this evening. For tag team partner, Mark Mabo Bowman, my brother. We'll talk to you later. For the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Everyone. August 18th. For NWA Women's World Champion, Tasha Simone. Who just bailed off the line just as I was doing the plugs. This is the Magic City Motor Mouth, Fast Steady Lane, saying adios, das vadanya, hasta luego, off weeders, ain't chow, sayonara, adieu, arrivederci, farewell, abasinho, au revoir. And until we meet again. We'll see you next Sunday, 5.30 Central, right here on Beyond Ringside. See you in 38 minutes for GCW Radio, and we're out. Bye for now. In 1977.